Hey guys, we're back to doing another video about our micro grow indoors. So today I want to try to think about a better way to make clones in my system. I need something that does it quite rapidly and uh, consistently. So far I've been having issues cloning into compost. Uh, mostly, you know, mold grows, we have high humidity. Recently we had lower temperatures in the tent, but we've got that fixed with a little bit, a little heater set up in the temperature controller there. But still, uh, I haven't been able to clone anything within like two weeks. Uh, from putting it into the medium to actually seeing roots or seeing that the plant is established without a humidity dome. Usually it takes me a lot closer to a month which seems kind of like a long time so I want to try to improve on that <clears throat> so I thought uh, you know what about these aero cloners these mist cloners um, maybe I can make something similar to that and I did have this little uh, air pump uh, this is from like the 90s, I think, and it was originally in a little aquarium with fish. And then I had it for some other uses. It was used to make compost tea at some point. Um, so yeah, I got some line here. Should be able to dig up an air stone, maybe get a couple. And I want to see if I can make one of these kind of like DWC bubble cloners. And so maybe you can make a really small one if you only need to take a couple cuts at a time out of just some plastic container like this. It'd be better if it was a solid darker color so the light wasn't getting in for the algae growth. But what I think I'm going to use is just one of these uh, plastic shoe boxes. It has a solid colored lid. The sides are transparent, um, but we'll just give it a shot, see if it works. So it's one of these. So, and what I'm going to do is cut some holes. And like you see in those uh, aero cloners, they usually have holes with like this puck insert. And so for that, you could use probably styrofoam or something like that, but I actually found this foam tube it's kind of similar to like a pool noodle and in the summer you might be able to find one of those without a hole in the middle uh, and that would probably work I really don't remember what this is for but we're just gonna go ahead and use it so we're gonna cut this up make some holes in here and uh, put our air stone into the water that we'll put in inside of them so let's get going on that Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this foam piece. Let's see. I think I want to go for maybe like an inch or so. I'm going to try for about three quarter of an inch. I think if you go too small, you're just not going to have enough area to grip. Um, so maybe it'll... This knife could definitely be a little sharper. Maybe like that. And then I'm going to cut down the center. About, I don't know, 60% through. And that's pretty much done. So you could open it up, stick your cutting in there, and then stick it into the cloner. Um, I do see them usually with an X here in the middle, so kind of, let's see, kind of shorter arms here on the side, so like that. You could also take a hot wire or maybe even a soldering iron with a small tip and burn a hole through the middle if you have really thick cuttings. If 
you have really small ones, you could just jam them in there or maybe even hold them in here. So the key now is going to be to match the holes on our container to this size. And for that, uh, I found this uh, kind of shot glass from Rogue. It's like a sample glass. And that fits, the bottom here fits pretty well. It's a bit smaller actually. Um, you can see the difference there is about two millimeters. So the bottom here is a bit smaller, so that should provide a slightly smaller circle that will fit this in tightly. All right, so I marked off where I'm gonna put my first holes um, with a size puck. I think I could fit five in a row. So center one and two more. And then maybe three rows total. So let's give that a shot. So I'm just gonna center this here. and trace out the circumference. And I'll go ahead and use my soldering iron to burn this out. There's lots of actually great uses for plastic applications for soldering irons. Make sure you have good ventilation when you're doing this. Um, and you know, it's for stuff that you'd rather have a smooth edge cut rather than a sharp cut like with a knife that might go off in a weird direction. And it will kind of screw up your soldering iron if you use it for, you know, actual metal soldering. Uh, you can restore it and kind of apply a bunch of uh, flux and stuff on there and get it back in shape, but you could just use a really cheap one like this. And I've used this for both metal and plastic, and then it's worked fine. So let's see, I think I'm going to go in next to it here. And just apply some pressure and move along the circle. You can see it's kind of forming that bead on each side. And I'm just going to basically cover up the blue line with the outside bead. And then if I need to kind of touch it up, I can go back and smooth things out and stuff. But you do kind of have to work quickly because, you know, it's constantly melting. Okay, so all the way through, I'm just gonna smooth this out here. And with this stuff, uh, this little bead of extra material, if you take it off like a little bit after it sets, you can actually peel it off quite easily. Otherwise, I think I might just leave it on. Once it sets hard, it will be kind of permanent and it'll be just a smooth edge here. Okay, so let's test out our little plug. Okay, so that actually fits really well. So yeah, I'd say closer to an inch might be a little better. That way you can have a little bit more grip here to take it out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and melt out all of the other holes. And so we'll have 15 total in this, uh, what is it? Six quart, 5.7 liter plastic box. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is make a lid that won't really affect the hose, so it'll just stay in place. And the way I'm going to do that is to just cut the channel all the way through here. Um, yeah. So 
So I'm just going to go straight down. So there's that. So let's see, we'll need to take off this excess on the inside so that the sides fit on. So we can cut that with the razor blade here in a second. But let's just check. I mean, it still fits on, no problem. You could still use it that way. And the hose goes in. And you can lift it off without taking the hose. However, however you want to set it up. All right, so I got all of the inserts cut out, the pucks. I made a little adjustment here. What was happening was that the middle of this cover was bowing out, basically. Like this, it was bowing up, up. And uh, that was causing issues with uh, kind of pushing the hose out. It wasn't lying flat against the wall here. And so what I did was I cut this little bit here and underneath here, and then I refused it while it was bent at the opposite angle, keeping it at that uh, bent in position. And I used a little bit of uh, the spare plastic from one of the cutouts to kind of plastic weld that back together. So now you can see it points down slopes down here and down here. So that should be good. The inserts fit really well. I have a feeling that the, because they're a bit larger than the holes that it's going to make an imprint in the middle here. So I've got them aligned really well so that uh, it makes that imprint right in the center of the puck and I can just, it'll be easier to put them in that exact position later on. So, as far as the air stone goes, I went ahead and got some of these little ones here, a T connector, and one of these 90 degree connectors. So that's going to go in here, and this distance here is basically half of the width at the bottom here. So that it's gonna sit like, like so. I would maybe even push them out a little bit further out, but I think that's kind of good there. So let's get this filled up and see how it works. All right, so let's test out this air pump here. So you can see that I've got the reservoir here filled about halfway. And you can fill it as high as you want depending on the length of the stem of the cutting that would be below the lid. In other words, the amount that will hang down below the puck. So I think the idea here isn't necessarily that um, stems are constantly submerged in water. If you wanted that, then it would probably be better to just have some type of floating setup. In fact, you could just maybe float these on their own like that. Um, and that way they would never really have a chance to dry out as the water level would drop, the floating pucks would drop with it. But I think it would be probably a little bit better if Maybe just the very end of the stem was in water, or better yet, if none of it was in actual water, but it was getting kind of a gentle spray or mist on it and keeping it wet that way, and so that it would still have good air exchange. And I think the way that these bubbler cloners work is that the bubbles, when they come up, they burst, and that bursting kind of flings tiny little droplets 
If I hold my hand about an inch above the water here, I can feel them coming up like a very fine mist. So I think that's going to work just fine. Now, I'm um, not quite sure what temperature is going to be ideal for this. I'm going to have to do some digging. If you've used one of these before, definitely let me know in the comments what your experience was and if uh, temperature made a big difference and if you added anything to the water like nutrients or uh, rooting hormones or anything. So I think that's going to work pretty well. Just like that. Alright, thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Keep on growing.